Welcome back, friends. Attributes of the resurrected body of Jesus and um, by extension, what will be some of our attributes as well. Sacred scripture and Catholic theology um, teach that our glorified resurrected bodies will experience four properties or attributes as an outflow of the beatified soul enjoying the vision of God. So it's our that all encompassing vision is that now sanctity. The sanctity is sanity because we're seeing things as they truly are with the eyes of God. And that, if you will, an ensouled body permeates the, the matter of the body. And there are four um, such attributes. The first is impassib what's called impassibility. That is that the, glor the glorified body will no longer suffer physical sickness or death. As St. Paul teaches in um, 1 Corinthians 15, 42, it is sown in corruption, it shall rise in incorruption. The schoolmen, and um, I had to look up that word because uh, just an aside, I'm in the process of reading the facts about Luther. It's um, looking at Luther from the eyes of a Protestant. Um, the author is Eau Claire, so he's definitely Catholic, but he's using the Prot Protestant's own research. But nonetheless, Luther referred to schoolmen as well. And it was not for Luther a pop, a good term, but the, uh, why do I use this? Because that's how uh, Catholic Advent will define it. Schoolmen were those who studied the scholastics. So, so all of this background for Luther, the schoolman was Aquinas in a derogatory kind of a way. But for Sarah and I, obviously, will be from a, 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 a positive. So impassibility, um, call this quality of impassibility, to mark as, pecul as a pecul peculiarity of the glorified body. The bodies of the damned, so there's impassibility, but that's not incorruption. Right. The damned are also incorruptible. They right. do not become yeah. annihilated. They do not disappear. Right. Uh, they are indeed um, experiencing all the consequences of their choices in their bodies, right. um, which would be subject to heat or cold and all manner of pain. Right. Impassibility is for the saints mm -hmm. who do not experience um, physical sickness or death. This, the second characteristic is subtlety, meaning that we will have a spiritualized nature in the sense of a spiritual body as our Lord did. Um, we will have a body that can pass through closed doors. So, um, Physicality is no longer a limitation like it is here. Our spirits would per, uh, perceive a thought always in um, harmony with the will of God because we're in a beatific vision. And we just move um, as uh, going through walls or, you know, going, appearing on roadways, you know, going, traversing uh, hundreds of miles mm -hmm. without any any effort. Mm -hmm. Agility. The glorified body will obey the soul with the greatest of ease and speed of movement. So subtlety was passing through doors. Agility is the quickness. Um, St. Thomas says, mobility can only signify agility and movement. Therefore, so subtlety and agility are kind of go together. They go together. Uh, therefore, the glorified bodies will be agile. The body participates in the soul's more perfect and spiritual life to such an ex extent that it becomes itself like a spirit. And it goes back to Ratzinger's that the body itself, uh, for lack of a better word, evolves. It evolves. It's um, it's not constraint 
by the natural laws as we have it, that it moves, um, it's perfectly, you know, it's without disease or infirmity. Um, it's, it goes through uh, physical substances all within the mind of God. And our fourth um, attribute is clarity. The glorified body will be free from any deformity and will be filled with beauty and radiance. Um, as we read in Matthew 13, 43, the just shall, sh shall shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Or wisdom 3, 7. The just shall shine and shall run to and fro like sparks among the reeds. Clarity refers not to being clear, but to being bright. It's a brightness. All the bodies of the saints, going back to the saints as Sarah rightly um, highlighted, shall be equally impassable without um, uh, uh, being sick or injured, but they shall be endowed with different degrees of glory. According to St. Paul, one is the glory of the sun, another um, the glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For stars differeth from star in glory. 1 Corinthians 15, 41 to 42. So in the Summa Contra Gentiles, um, part four, uh, paragraph 86, summarized. Thus also will his body be raised to the characteristics of his, the, the soul in beatific vision, be raised to the characteristics of heavenly bodies. It will be lightsome, incapable of suffering, lightsome is clarity, incapable of suffering is impassable, without difficulty and labor and movement, agility, and most perfectly perfected by its form, subtlety. For this reason, the apostle Paul speaks of the bodies of the risen as heavenly, referring not to their nature, but to their glory. My friends, it's really a great, great thing, and it is really worth the cost of following Christ and to put our hope and our trust in him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, all of the all of the things that are here that are quote unquote limitations to limitations to man are there for the purpose of instruction. You know, we we are we are mortal at this point and things can cause harm and we can cause harm with things and so consequently you know we're put into a material world for the purpose of learning all of these things are there to to reveal god to us right and and so consequently once we are um in that marvelous moment of the beatific vision we will be like gods because we will see him as he is and so uh, all of the things that would have been necessary to come to know him, all of that can pass away. And now we can simply reside in his goodness. And um, anything that would have been necessary, like I said, for instruction um, is no longer going to be necessary. However, because we know that the material world can cause pain and can cause suffering, um, that is going to be one of the eternal punishments of the people who never achieve the beatific vision because they never because they're never able to enter into that beatific vision. They are never going to have the wisdom necessary to not have those elements still interfering with the body. And I think that um, I, I do think that that's one of the things that uh, Dante does the best in his Inferno is really showing that perpetual non-impassibility right the perceptive the 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 per the eternal passability and when we say passability that that's coming from passio from to suffer right mm -hmm. so not from you know to pass or to go away or something like that it's from the passion of christ we will we will no longer be capable of suffering but the the poor souls in hell never will have their body be glorified they will never have that moment of of transfused grace. You know, I, I was thinking when you were talking about that before, Karen, I was thinking about that because of how you were talking about Ratzinger talking about this, this transformation, you know, the body is transformed. And I was just thinking of that awesome power that now we can see was displayed in the Shroud of Turin. That's right. Right. I mean, there's, there was some kind of, you know, 
spark that generates uh, an intense life. I mean, I don't even know how, how, how we don't have the words to really articulate what was what goes on there. But physicists now who study that shroud recognize that there's some kind of awesomeness there that they that they can't see anywhere nor replicate. That is correct. That is correct. So, the amount of power that was present in such a short period. So it was a tremendous power that caused the imprinting, but it was such a short duration of time so that it did not consume the cloth. Right. right. That's astounding. <laughs> yeah. uh, is a tremendous scientific mystery. That yeah. is all right, my friends, we're going to pick up with the Ascension and Pentecost in the next episode. Till the next time, be days at Rachio.